Hey Blender Bob here, welcome to part 1 of 5 on this series of modeling for the VFX film industry. So, you want to become a modeler and uh, work on all these crazy Marvel movies and everything and you've been working with Blender and you have all the add-ons possible to do all the crazy Boolean stuff and everything and you think, I'm ready to go. Well, it's not that simple because in the film industry they are very picky on the way the models need to be done because models will be distorted, they will be twisted, they will explode and everything and they need to be done in a very specific way. And this is what this series is about. I will try to show you everything you need to know, give you a good basis to make sure your models are clean and they can be transferred from one software to another without any problem. So, here we go. So let's start with uh, something very simple. We're going to do a window frame. We're going to keep it as light as possible with just the amount of detail we need to make it realistic. Okay, so we'll just scale a cube and inset the opposing faces. We can now just bridge them. The result is way too simple. Nothing in real life has sharp edges. Well, not that sharp. The reflex of a junior modeler, no offense, will be to add a bevel modifier. Bevels are super important in hard surface modeling, but they need to be done properly. It still doesn't look like a window. Window frames don't have round corners like that. They are made of four parts, so let's separate them two by two. Since in this case they won't touch each other, we don't need to make four parts. Keep it simple. If you use F, it will fill the holes at each end. Same thing for the second one. Let's put it back where it was. We can now add the bevel modifier. You don't need more than two segments. Certainly not in this case anyways. Did you know you can copy the modifier from one object to another? This method will actually copy all the modifiers and their parameters. Select the one you want to modify, then shift click the one with the modifiers. Using Ctrl L, choose modifiers. Now we have something that looks much more realistic. Just a tiny bevel, but it makes all the difference. If you apply smooth shading on the parts, you will get a strange result. That's because I didn't apply the transformation on the geometry before I did the bevels. It's not too late, it's easy to fix. See the scale here? Select your object, object menu, and apply the transformations. But now it looks a little bit rounded instead of flat. That can also be easily fixed using the weight normal modifier. Now you can combine these two parts. Keep everything light and simple. We'll come back to this model in one of the next parts of the series. We're not done yet. Let's move on to quads and the even distribution of the polygons. With this demonstration, you will see that the first three react well to distortion. The first one may give you some issues at rendering if you twist it too much. Quads don't react well when there's too much twisting. The last two will give you unacceptable results. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, now let's see what happens if we apply a displacement modifier on them. On the first one, you can barely see it because there's just not enough resolution. So we'll add a subdivision modifier. The polygons are not square and this will be noticeable in the displacement. The higher the subdivision, the better the results. Yet, as mentioned, you can still feel the unequal size of the polygons. For this one, because the polygons are square to begin with, we get the expected result. Same for the third one. For the last two, the displacements are unequal and look very bad. This is totally unacceptable and if you ever give me a geometry like this, you will do some push-ups. There is a workaround, but it only works in cycles. You have to turn on the experimental feature set. It may be experimental, but I never had any issues with it. Then, in the subdivision modifier, make sure to turn on adaptive and you will get the expected result. This only works if you use a displacement shader, not the displacement modifier. Boom, boom, boom. The displacement modifier will turn off the adaptive option. You also need to turn on the displacement in the shader. Wireframe, regular, and adaptive subdivision. Alright, I hope this was useful to you. The second part is about subdivision, so please check it out and make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Bye!